So we've got three of these big buckets. Uh, I guess we got about 40 to 50 kilos. We are really getting nowhere with this weather. <laughs> the days they predict weather and I don't plan for any work on the house. <laughs> it turns out to be sunny. And the days where uh, no rain is predicted, it looks like this. Change of plans. A week has went by again and nothing has happened on the house. Uh, so, because it's like raining a little, uh, we're gonna do some olive harvesting first. Um, because we're running behind on schedule, I asked my friend uh, Andre to come and help me out. He has some equipment for uh, getting the olives out of the trees. And we're first gonna do this land. It's maybe five or six trees. Yeah, and then I have a whole lot of sorting to do. Uh, we're gonna need three buckets. One for the rotten ones, they can go directly on the compost. Uh, then one for the ones we're gonna press. And one for the ones we're gonna cure. Uh, so tonight probably I have a whole lot of buckets of olives to sort. <laughs> Let's see how quickly we can do that. And then next week, uh, we're probably gonna do the other field. I've been working on some other things uh, in the meanwhile. <laughs> Check out the weekend videos for that. <laughs>
So that went fairly well, I think. And uh, this machine from Andre uh, throws the olive really always. <laughs> um, like with the, um, where we were with the fence, like the olive tree next to the gate. Um, yeah, you really need some bigger net because of the of the fence, the wall. Uh, but it went fairly well, I think. I have uh, four crates. Uh, now I need to do a small dog walk. Then I'm gonna try and sort out one crate and see if we can fit some already for the the curing. And I got my Amazon delivery for uh, Olive Press. This is a really small thing. I'll show you when we get home. Without leash. Let's see. So we've got three of these big buckets. Uh, this last tree really got uh, the most olives. I think this tree maybe give like 15 kilos. I'm coming to take a look at the olive harvest. Hmm? It's behind you here, sweetie. Yeah. What? Olives. Yeah. She likes the olive oil that I put on her food sometimes. Huh? You can try some when it's ready. <laughs> uh, I guess we got about 40 to 50 kilos. Um, now what I didn't realize is that um, I wanted to select the ones for curing. It's a lot easier to select them from the tree than to select them from the bucket. So I don't know how much I'm uh, gonna sort out here for curing olives. I need to sort out the, the rotting ones before I start try to press them. <laughs> no, you don't like them, sweetie. You tried yesterday. No, this is a good one. No. But here is the same black one, but then with a hole. Um, so I'm thinking of um, not sorting this too much for the curing uh, olives, but go to the other land and pick there right from the tree a couple of kilos to um, cure. Maybe three kilos or something. Uh, we found out that um, one kilo is about 500 olives. There are still some good ones in here. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So I have here a bucket with... Oh. Be careful with the good olives. Uh, with some good olives. But that needs to be still a little bit more. Um, I bought these things to pit them. I have no experience with this. So I just bought two different ones. Uh, the funny thing is, I saw these on Amazon and uh, this metal one was like 9.99. And this plastic one was like five euros, I think. Uh, but if you go to the Chinese store here in uh, Castel Branco, you can get this one for uh, one euro seventy-five, <laughs> and you can get this one for uh, what was it, two euro fifty or seventy. And they look exactly the same. Wondering how long they hold up, though. 
should actually be a fairly easy process, right? Now we need another bucket. Already that's not really working how I want. The olives get pretty messed up like this. <laughs> so what happens with this thing is that, I don't know if you can see it, but if you put in the olive like normal, this thing hits like on the side of the olive. Now, if you press it through, it ends up exactly in the middle of the thing. But before it goes in, it's like bent. You see this? Yeah. Try the other one. If you position it right, it works. Hey! One day sunshine and these flies are directly at you again. Okay, this thing maybe works better. cheaper one. Only 1490 to go. <laughs> no, it worked. of the time. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Huh. So, but yeah, that we should be able to do this way. Uh, I'll be busy with that for a couple of nights. Uh, I'll show you another video, the curing process, what we're going to try. Uh, then the pressing. <laughs> Join me into the kitchen. Uh, don't mind the mess. Just had breakfast. And I didn't clean up. Oh. <coughs> I bought this. What a cute little thing, huh? Just to try how this olive pressing should work. So, um, yeah. You fill this up with olives. And here's a, like a thingy where the oil comes out. And then you start squeezing this down. But that's a whole lot of turning. <laughs> Maybe I should put a drill on that. And then slowly every time press it a little bit harder and then the oil should come out. Uh, remember, I 
this is the first time I'm gonna try this. Um, at least uh, I don't know how to do it in Portugal, but I know the Italians, they, before they press it, they cut sort of the olive open. And then they let it sit for a while, and then they press it. Uh, I saw also what you can do is you can press it like twice. So you can press it first, and then I'm gonna get the stuff out, put it all in a big bucket, uh, run some first presses, and then uh, after that, take the stuff that has uh, sit a little bit and uh, put it in again, and then try to press it again. Uh, coming to think of it, if I have to turn it this much, it may have been easier to cut them open before. But we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try one batch, show you guys if and how it works. So they're apparently not really getting smashed after the first time of uh, pressing. Some are, <laughs> but some are just still whole. I think it would be a better idea, especially for the small press, to find some way to um, smash them first before putting them in. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to be a really a lot of work. Uh, I pressed about one kilo now. And no, this is not all going to be oil. <laughs> This is actually probably going to be a tablespoon of oil. <laughs> it needs to sit for about uh, eight hours. Not too long because then it's going to ferment. Um, I'm going to add some water so the oil can float on top of the water and all the other stuff can stay down of the water. Uh, this is just a small experiment. <laughs> I'll let you know in one of the next videos how far I got with this uh, mini press. <laughs> but if it's a good system and it works, maybe there's a bigger press available and you can do it at home also. It's fun to do. Uh, add some water. Some of the Garidas mountain water. And then let's see if that is going to turn into some oil. <laughs> Now it's time to continue on the roof.
really lovely that that sun is back. Where are my sunglasses? Uh, you can get yours in the web shop if you want. Go check it out. There we go. Bye. Thank you for watching another video of the Portugal project. If you want to follow the Portugal project more closely, you can also add it on Facebook. Or add me on my personal account on Facebook or Instagram. See you next time at the Portugal project.